Hey everyone, Relapse here. I had a lot of people asking about springs on Discord previously, so I figured I'd make a video to help newer people out. We hit 100 subs recently, I wanted to thank you all for sticking around and watching my videos. So, to start off, I want to reiterate that this guide is for beginners. This is in no way as in-depth or scientific as others who have taken an attempt in explaining springs, nor will I cover in detail other things such as spring length, width, or coil tightness, otherwise known as spring index. Okay, so to the right here, we have a mechanical switch at various stages. The top one is a switch that doesn't have any force on it. Then the middle picture is a switch right before when the switch actuates. This means that the two leaves that I have circled here will make contact and your keyboard will register a key press. The last picture shows a switch that's been fully pressed or bottom out. To the left, we can see a spring force curve from Sprit's website. Sprit is an aftermarket vendor that sells Sprit springs. It's missing a decent amount of data to be a graph, but I'll go ahead and fill it in. So on the Y axis, we have the spring force, and on the X axis, we have the stem distance traveled. I'll go ahead and draw it in now. What this means is that the further we push the springs downward, our distance traveled will increase. At the same time, as the distance traveled increases, so will the force needed to get there. Say for example, we take a look at a 65 gram spring. Usually, aftermarket springs are rated for bottom-out force, so a 65 gram spring means that the switch will bottom out at 65 grams. Let's set our endpoint of our spring force curve to 65 grams. I will highlight this point at black, and that will be 65 grams. Generally, switches travel a distance of 4 millimeters to bottom out. We'll set our X access limit to four millimeters. Depending on the switch, the distance traveled and actual actuation point, the actuation point will vary. For the purposes of this video, we'll set an arbitrary value of two millimeters. Let's take a look at the linear spring in red. This is the most common spring in switches. We can see it's called linear as it's just a straight line from start to finish. A slow curve spring, shown in the yellow here, is usually longer, which starts with preload. That means that there's more force needed to start pushing the switch downwards. Slow curve springs have less variance between the starting and ending weights because of this preload. Sprit has multiple slow spring variants, which all get less steep the higher in number we go up. For example, there are slow extremes, slow extreme twos, and slow extreme threes. Threes will start off with the most preload and will have the less variance between the bottom out and the beginning forces. Another common spring in the aftermarket are progressive springs. Progressive springs can vary in how they look. They can be shorter than linears, or look like a spring that has both loose and tightly wound coils. And I have an example of that shown here. Okay, moving on. These start off much lighter than usual springs and get harder as we get close to bottoming out. This creates a switch which is light to press on and helps train you to not bottom out as heavily as the force needed to bottom out the switch is exponentially higher towards the end. In the purple, we have complex springs. Sometimes you'll see springs which have differently wound coils or indices in different areas and an assortment of different lengths. There are other springs that are called two, three, or multi-stage springs. Depending on the configuration of the spring, the force curve will vary. In this example here, we can see that it starts off at the same starting force as a linear spring, but it is much lighter to press on than a traditional linear. 
Like a progressive, it'll start off light and gets harder to press until around our actuation point. Beyond that, it's a linear climb to bottom out. And that concludes our talk about springs. I hope that this information will help you more on spring choices. Switch modding is very common the deeper you get into the hobby, and my recommendation is you should always try it all if you have the means to. But that doesn't mean you should buy everything. Make sure you make informed decisions unless you have deep pockets, of course. Again, thank you all for listening, and feel free to leave a question or comment below. I'll do my best to replying to what I can.